interested. So as build, fitness for sailing, everything you're going to need to know about why you should get fit for sailing and how's best to do so. Um, so I'm Gemma Dobson. I think a lot of you have met me before. So I'm a sailor, reasonably new to sailing. I started when I met Ian, um, realized that it was either I learned to sail or I would never ever see him. So I got into a boat and learned. <laughs> I'm also a personal trainer. I'm a triathlete. I do Ironman triathlon and I coach triathlon as well. So I do a lot into sports science, a lot of the strength and conditioning training to be able to give you and to give our members at Stream Fitness the best training possible. So Stream Fitness is my baby as such. We've got lots of GP members that come along to our classes. Their home workouts streamed across Zoom. So very much like how we are now, you've got your cameras on, we've got our cameras on, we can see you, um, go through the exercises and we can help you, motivate you and keep you going. And it's also lots of fun. Um, so here's our website link down here, just in case you want to have a look at a little bit more. So I will skip through. So sailing for fitness, fitness for sailing. What is fitness? So the dictionary definition of fitness is the condition of being physically fit and healthy. We all know that. We all think we're reasonably fit. We think we're okay. So fitness for sailing. This is more in line with the second definition of fitness here. And that's the quality of being suitable to fulfill a particular role or task. So whilst you might think that you're fit and healthy, can you actually get into the boat and do your task in that boat to the best possible ability? Are you fit enough to do it? Are you strong enough to do it? Um, this is particularly resonant for me because I often get into the boat and sail with Ian. Um, my triathlete T-Rex arms come into play and I can't pull the jib in and he has to pull it in for me. So whilst I might be fit, I'm not necessarily fit for sailing because I can't pull those sheets in. So that's something really to think about. Are you, are you really as fit as possible as you can be for sailing? So if the answer to that is no, I'm probably not as fit as possible for sailing, then how do you get sailing fit? There are lots of different types of fitness, lots of ways to get fit. Um, first one on this list is cardiovascular fitness, which is your CV, which is your running, where you get your heart rate up and you keep your heart rate up and then you build and build and build. You're building the strength through in your lungs. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Strength. So you need that muscle power. Like I said, I've got no strength in my arms whatsoever because I just sit on a bike all day. So actually to be able to pull those sheets in, you need a lot of arm strength, you need your back and your core. Muscle memory, I've got this under fitness because I think it's really, really important. You need to practice those movements and get that muscle memory so that you can do these, do each routine in the boat automatically and not think about it too much. Um, injury prevention, so it's all well and good being, being fit, being able to do the movements, but actually if you're really prone to injury, you're never going to be able to get into a boat and race or go out and enjoy it. Um, the next one, mental resilience. So do you get into the boat and think, this weather is horrible, I'm never going to do this, I'm going to have a horrible day? Or do you get into the boat thinking, oh, this weather's really bad, but I've practiced it, I know I can do it, I'm going to have a great day today? So it's your mindset and how you think about it. And it's really important that you keep your mindset and how you think as fit and healthy as your body. And then the final one that we're going to come to in the presentation today is nutrition. So again, it's all good and well being fit, healthy, strong. But if you're not eating, you're not fueling and you're not recovering for those sailing races, you're not going to perform as well as you want to. So we'll come on to cardiovascular fitness. And this is quite often the one that nobody likes to do. So we have lots of people come and join our classes and they say, oh, I'm just going to do the strength. I don't like the cardio. I don't like jumping up and down. I don't like getting hot and sweaty. That's absolutely fine. But there are lots of different ways that you can build your cardiovascular fitness. So why you need to do it. Cardiovascular fitness builds a stronger heart and lungs. So you might not be going out to run a marathon when you get into your boat at the weekends. That's fine. But a stronger heart and lungs will help your circulatory system to get the oxygen into those muscles. It will help fuel those muscles so you'll function better, even though you're not necessarily running or doing CV work in the boat. Although we all know, I think, on really windy days, it does turn into a bit of a CV exercise as you're 
puffing and panting through trying to get around the race course. So, <laughs> so just reading Curly's comment here, telly into buy you ratchet blocks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure he, he's, he's still on mute, Ian's watching. So um, we'll see if he comes back to that one. Um, so cardiovascular fitness, high or low intensity. You can go out and you can try and sprint around a 5k loop around your house as running. Um, that's great, but it might increase your fitness to a certain extent, but it's going to make you really, really tired. It's going to put a lot of stress, a lot of strain on your muscles and on your joints. But if you went out and you did the same distance, but you ran really slowly, so you're running almost as slow as you would be as a fast walk, you're still getting all of that benefit. Your CV system is still working hard, but you're not putting all of the stress through your muscles, through your joints. It will take you less time to recover and you'll need to, and then you'll be able to go and do more for that same distance. So you, instead of going out and running 5K max intensity once a week, you could maybe go and do three lots of 5K runs at lower intensity and you'll get so much more benefit from doing that rather than going all out fast as you can if you're on Strava trying to get your Strava records and then that writes you off and then you're back to square one again because you've not been able to do anything for the three or four days afterwards. Equally, if you're going out and doing those longer runs or the lower intensity runs but more often, you're building up your endurance so you're able to do more and more often and that's what you want with sailing really especially if you're going to a race where you're, you're racing over two or three days or even up to a week, you need to have a really good endurance base and doing activities like the slower, longer, more repetitive ones, you're going to do much better in those longer races than you will do if you're just going out trying to run a 5k sprint as fast as you can once a week. So we've mentioned a little bit here, um, building your cardiovascular fitness helps bring in more oxygen to your body. It helps your blood carry the oxygen around more efficiently, helps bring the fuel to your muscles more efficiently. So your body's working less hard to be able to do the same job. And that's what we want to do really. We want to make sure that when you get into your boat on race day, or even if you're just out for a future at the weekend, that your body is working really hard for you, but in the most efficient way possible. Equally, having this sort of fitness helps you recover a little bit faster. So again, like I said, if you go out and run a 5k, it can take you a really long time to recover. But if you've got really good cardiovascular fitness, you will recover faster than if you didn't do anything in preparation for it at all. So I've based a lot of this on running. You don't have to run to get your CV fitness up. You can cycle, you can walk quickly. Hill walking is a really good way of increasing your fitness. Um, if you want to stay at home and the weather's terrible outside, we run lots of cardiovascular fitness classes um, through Stream Fitness. So you just need a square in your lounge and you, you dial in various different types. You can do hit workouts, you can do basic CV workouts where you're jumping up and down. Um, and the changes in direction of doing something in your lounge in a small area of space and going from the floor to standing up is really good, not only for building up that CV fitness. Can I just remind everybody just to go on mute? We're just getting a little bit of feedback, I think. Super, thank you. <laughs> um, so lots of different changes in direction will not only help with your CV fitness, but will also help with injury prevention and building strength as well, which we'll come to in a minute. So strength, who's come off of the boat after a really windy day feeling like a T-Rex with your arms? Um, again, I mentioned lots of nods, yeah, <laughs> quite often. So building up the strength in our arms is really, really important, um, especially if you're sat in the front, but also for everybody. Okay, let me just quick stroke through. Okay, so Everything you do in the boat requires strength. Everything you do in your day-to-day -day life requires strength. Even sat in your chair at the moment, you're using your core muscles to sit up straight. Um, I'm just doubting. <laughs> um, so being stronger, sorry, Kathy, I was going to pop you on mute. So being stronger 
will help make sailing more enjoyable. You'll be able to do more. You'll go faster. Um, and it, you just have a much, much better time whilst you're sailing if you're stronger. So one thing lots of people say to me as a personal trainer is, I don't want to do weights. I don't want to do strength work. I'm just going to end up like Arnie. I don't want to bulk up. I don't want to get big. I don't want to get muscly. That's absolutely fine. Being strong doesn't mean being muscly. So you can still be lean. You can still be slim. You don't need to have those big, big muscles where you can't move to be strong. So what do you think, by all means write in the chat, what do you think your key muscles are for sailing? Which are the muscles that you really need to work hard for and build up to be strong for your sailing? If anybody can type in the chat, core, yeah, absolutely. That is the most important one. So we go for that. So core, core strength, core is everything in your trunk, basically. So all of these muscles are quite often forgotten about, especially for people that go to the gym, they'll do the leg press, they'll do the shoulder press, um, they work really, really hard, but they forget about their core muscles. And it's these core muscles that you need to build, to develop, to strengthen, and to get the endurance training in, especially for sailing, where you're pulling, maybe pulling with one arm, you could be pulling with both arms, you're hiking backwards, you need to bring your body back up to the boat or you might be hiking and then you need to come quickly over to the side and over to the other side of the boat or you're reaching down to do something and then coming back again all of those muscles you need a really strong core you can't just pull on one arm so if your arms are really strong you can't just pull here without needing your core to stabilize you to use that as leverage to pull so your core is the most important one it's really easy to strengthen your core at home you don't need weights most people's cores are very very weak um you can do lots of tests to see so sit up see how many sit-ups you can do in a minute or two um and that'll give you a really good idea or a benchmark of how weak or strong your core muscles are so we do lots of strength work um three string fitness Again, no equipment, it's all on the floor. So you just need a mat and a small space and you can build a really strong core just through your body weight exercises alone. And you'll be amazed at how much pain in a good way, pain and burning through those muscles you can get just by sitting on your lounge floor and running through the group classes. So like I said, Pilates is one of our most popular classes for athletes. We have lots of triathletes, lots of Ironmen, lots of GB athletes come in and do our strength classes through Stream Fitness. They think they've got strong cores and then they come to our Pilates classes and they, they crawl off to bed after class in the evenings. It's, <laughs> it's really, really good. So if you think you're strong, if you think you're tough, come to Pilates and give it a go. Um, it's based on building the strongest possible core and that's what you need with sailing. It will make the rest of your sailing movements really, really easy. It'll also help you concentrate because you're not, your mind's not distracted on how tired your body is. And that makes a really big difference. If you've got a strong body, you can then focus on the tactical side, you focus on what you're actually supposed to be doing rather than thinking, oh my goodness, this really hurts today. So. It's also a really good part of injury prevention. If you've got a strong core, all of the rest of your body works better. Your movements are better. You're more in line. Your hips are in line. Your knees are more in line. Um, so your glutes, if you've got a strong core, that includes your glutes. If you've got strong glutes, your knees are facing the right direction. Your toes and your ankles are generally facing the right direction. So you haven't got all the twists and imbalances in your knees and your hips that you would do if your core's weak. Equally, with a strong core, you're going to have less shoulder injuries because you're using your core to pull back rather than just all these little muscles in your shoulders. So if you think as you're pulling, you can either pull using these little muscles stabilizing around in your shoulder, or you can pull and use your core, which are all of the big muscles and all down your back as well. So it makes it a lot easier to do those movements. 
Um, swim bands is a second class that I would recommend to all sailors to come. Um, I've put on there that I'm sailing. I hope I won't be swimming. Have I gone mad? So swim bands is not because I think you'll all be swimming and that you need some help for capsizes. <laughs> um, so swim bands are basically bungee cords tethered just slightly above your, your head height. You have one in each hand and you can pull them back. So you're strengthening all your pull muscles, all the muscles down your back. Um, we do lots of different variations, strengthening all your stabilizing muscles around your shoulders, all of the muscles around through your back. And also it really engages your core. You can't do swim bands without having a really tight core. So it works all of your arms, all of your back and all of your stomach. And it's really easy to do at work. You can just tether it up above your door, close the door and then do your swim bands. A really easy way of getting strong without weight. So you won't bulk up. And then you can just pop them away. It doesn't take up any space at all. Okay, so muscle memory, still going along um, with fitness. And it ties in really, really well because you'll notice a lot of people, particularly at Olympics in all sports, they've done these exercises so many times it's automatic. They could almost be asleep whilst they're doing the movements. They could have their eyes closed and sail along because they know how it feels and their muscles are programmed to, it's almost like a twitch. You know exactly what you're going to do. It happens and you're not even thinking about it. So if there are movements that you do all the time in sailing, but you just feel a little bit slow when you're doing them, or if you're trying to master a new movement, then practice really does make perfect. So being fit, being strong helps you to do these movements faster and more automatically, but practicing them along with your fitness will really, really help. So to build your muscle memory, you want to focus first of all on the really small basic movements. So that could be reaching down to grab a particular rope that's always in a certain position. So just get used to reaching in that position. And then you can start to add some load onto that. So if you're not in the boat, you can do this at home. Um, again, tether a bungee cord around a table leg and practice pulling that rope again um getting used to those movements and then you can add load as you get stronger so it's really really good to go out and practice the same movements when it's not so windy <clears throat> excuse me and then start to add load or start to practice those movements a bit more as it gets windier and really get used to building up that muscle memory the practice and it becomes automatic and you can do it really really fast with much less effort if you've done it already. Okay, so injury prevention. This is probably one of the biggest positive aspects for building up your fitness and building up your strength through sailing. Lots of people get sore knees, sore back, um, shoulder injuries, and it's all because, nine times out of 10, um, because your core and because your strength has been completely ignored. So we all go sailing, we don't actually do the preparation to put our bodies in the best possible position before we go sailing. So it's irrelevant of whether you want to go faster, whether you want to go harder, whether you want to win the race or what you want to do. You need to make sure that you don't get injured when you get into the boat. So strength, strength, strength. That's what you need to focus on. I mean, you can do two sessions a week or even one session a week. If you're doing nothing at the moment, just one session a week will still make a big difference to you and then build up as you get stronger. So to prevent those injuries, like I said, core, core is my favorite word in fitness because it's the most important regardless of what sport you do. You need to really concentrate on building all of the muscles through your stomach, across your back, your lower back and your glutes. Your glutes are so important, particularly with sailing. Um, you want to start off with low weights and high repetitions. So by low weight, um, we do, like I said, we do body weight training. So you'll start off with a low weight on body weight training, might be doing a press up, but on your knees. So you're reducing the leverage, reducing the force and the weight that comes through your arms. So starting off low and building up really, really gradually. I, for one, am somebody that's really guilty of getting really excited with strength work and I'll go and pick up the weights that I used to be able to do, do a session as if I've 
been doing it for ages and then not being able to walk or move for the next three weeks afterwards because I've gone too hard straight away. Um, I've seen some nods. So <laughs> that's something that you need to be really, really careful. If you do that, you're likely to injure yourself and to do yourself more damage. So start really conservatively, start with low weights, low reps, and just do a little bit. You can do a little bit each day or just do once a week. Like I said, choose what suits you and go off how it feels. So how you feel the next day. If you can't lift your arms the next day after you've done something, then you've gone too hard. So a little bit of aching, a little bit of fatigue and soreness is fine. But if you're struggling to come down the stairs or to lift your cup of tea, then you've gone a little bit too hard that day. So just try reducing it and build up a little bit more slowly. So other things to try, um, in addition to classes, HIIT training. So HIIT training is high intensity interval training. It involves lots of getting up and down off of the floor, changing directions, moving your arms around. So you want your body to move on every axis possible to prevent injuries. So it's quite often you'll be in a boat and you'll move in a funny direction that your body's not used to and you might roll over on your ankle, you might twist your knee. Um, so you want to be practicing agility style exercises whilst you're off the water. So get your body used to moving in different directions and then build strength into being able to move yourself back into the position that you want to be. So HIIT training is really good for that because you are in all sorts of positions and you're building up that strength. So ankle wobble boards are also really good. So if you find that your ankles get sore or you roll your ankles sometimes, an ankle wobble board is fantastic. It's like a semicircle underneath with a flat surface on top. You stand on top and it does exactly what it says. You just wobble on it. You stand on it. It's not difficult. And you just move your feet forward and backwards, side to side. And then if you want to, you can go on one foot and it really builds up your ankle strength. So if you're finding a lot of the time when you're running from one side of the boat to the other, particularly when it's windy, that your ankles are feeling sore or you're rolling on them, then they're really, really good. And then the other thing to try is the bungee cords, like with the swim bands. So you're moving your arms, stretching that bungee cord in front. You can go up above your head and stretch. And you can use a bungee cord to practice with your shoulder mobility. So you're holding the bungee cord and you can go up and over the top and back over the other way, improving the mobility in your shoulders. Other parts of injury prevention that are really important are stretching and flexibility. So like I've just said there, building your range of movement with your shoulders, you can also do that with your hamstrings in particular, which is really good because you'll get very, very tight hamstrings whilst you're hiking. Um, I don't know if you've come off the water sometimes, particularly with your quads as well, you've come off the water and the next day you've struggled to walk down the stairs or to sit in your chair because all of your muscles are really, really sore. So you can stretch out that soreness and the more you use your muscles, the more you strengthen them and lengthen them, the less fatigue and the less sore you're going to get after you've done those particularly hard boat sessions. So I've put at the top there, yoga is not for girls. I've had a lot of people say, mm, I don't really fancy yoga. I, they just see it as a bunch of women, big long ponytails in their lycra going um that's not what yoga is like with us so <laughs> i said at the bottom there you choose your class appropriate to you there are yoga classes where you can do the meditation and the umming and ahhing and there are other ones that are more stretch based based on yoga positions so you can either do the more hippie ones or you can go for the more serious just stretching classes so yoga is really, really good for building your flexibility and your range of movement, which you need with sailing because you don't know which way the boat's necessarily going to go in a gust or you could be caught off guard. Um, anything can happen. So having the confidence in your body that actually if you're going to suddenly, say you dropped a rope, you're going to have big stretch and reach to grab that rope before that capsizes the boat. So by having your flexibility in your range of movement, you know you can quickly grab that and pull it back and you're not going to put your back out or you're not going to overreach your arm or stretch, pull your hamstring. So it's really, really good for having that confidence. You're stretching your body out, you're relaxing off your muscles 
and you can also incorporate some of the breathing into it depending on which classes you choose to learn how to stretch through with your breath so you're not pulling your body into a stretch and doing damage to your muscles you're just relaxing down and as you breathe out you're letting your body weight come into that stretch and that's how to do it properly without overstretching and hurting yourself I fit on here headspace it's nice sometimes during your stretching just to have a little bit of a think and be aware of where your body hurts because sometimes it's when you're doing the stretches you've got time out you've got no distractions and you can start to feel the niggles somewhere so you might think oh actually my hamstring's really sore I might need to do a little bit more work on that or that arm feels really weak when I'm on this side so you know then to go and practice and do a little bit more strength maybe on that side or to put an ice pack somewhere so it's really good at making you aware of potential injuries before they become a big problem mental resilience um i should probably have asked catherine for some input on this slide really <laughs> um so mental resilience is really really important it's all well and good being physically fit but your mental fitness is just as important if not more important when you're racing particularly when you're doing the longer races over a couple of days because you can get to the end of the day and your brain can be so tired you just don't want to carry on anymore so building up that mental resilience having lots of little different tactics and things on how to cope with it if maybe you do something wrong and your hound shouts at you as having little bits to say well actually no I can do this I know I can do this we're all just really tired um, and believing that your body is fit and healthy enough to be able to do it so it's equally as important to practice the mental aspects of the sport as it is to do the physical aspects so to help build your mental resilience you can simulate movements and scenarios in your head you can draw them on paper or you can talk about them so it's quite good um maybe the night before your race you go to bed and you close your eyes and you just run through thinking about what the start might be like what your routine is for the start um what your routine is as you go around a mark so lots of little things even just hoisting the kite you might just have your eyes shut and think oh i do this 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 and that also relates back into the muscle memory if you're running through those movements in your head it's much more automatic when you come to do them physically and you'll do them much faster much more confidently and it's one less thing to really have to worry about so again, like the muscle memory, go out and practice when the weather isn't favorable. Build your confidence in those conditions. This is something that we work on really hard with our triathletes as well. You'll hear so many people say, oh, I'm not going out cycling today. I'm not gonna train today. It's too wet, it's too windy, the weather's too horrible. But that could be that weather on race day. You can't determine what the weather's going to be like on race day. And the chances are you're going to have to go out and sail in it anyway. So. Providing it's within the race limits, go out and practice it. Don't sit there, look out the window and think, mm, I don't fancy it today. It's those races, or sorry, those training sessions or club races where you're going to build up that mental resilience and really make a difference when it comes to the important races down the, down the road because you've practiced it, you know what to expect, you're not scared of it anymore and you know that you can handle it. So you have to... I've said at the bottom, you have to believe to achieve. You really have to be confident in yourself and know that you can do it both physically and mentally. And by practicing it through your head, by picturing it, you don't need to tell anybody else that you're doing it. It can be personal to you, or you can talk about it with people and run through and discuss different scenarios. So it depends what you're comfortable with and how you want to <clears throat> talk about it or visualize it. So we're nearly at the end. I hope I'm not boring you all too much. <laughs> um, so nutrition for sailing, um, bring your picnics. It's really, really important that you eat enough on race day, before race day, to make sure that all of this fitness training, all of your practice doesn't go to waste. So again, we see this a lot with our triathletes. They have textbook training all the way up to race day. They get to race day, they're too nervous to have breakfast, so they skip breakfast. They go out for their swim, they forget to have their energy gel between the swim and the bike. 
they're on the bike, they're too excited, they're going really, really fast, they don't want to come out of their aero position, so they don't eat through the bike leg. They get to the run and basically they crash and burn and hobble all the way around the run because they haven't eaten anything. That is exactly the same with sailing. And it was one of the things that when I was first introduced with sa to sailing through Ian that I was really surprised at. And that's the lack of people that prepare their food, that think about how they're fueling for those races. Um, so it's a slightly different change of mindset you need to think about fueling and not eating. So you want to be fueling your body to get your way through the race, not thinking about, oh, it's lunchtime, it's dinner time, it's snack time. You're fueling for the day. So forget about eating, you're fueling. So think about it of your car. You run out of petrol, you can't go anywhere. That's exactly the same with your body, particularly under race conditions. So the first and most obvious thing that you need to think about is your breakfast. So we all love a fry up. We particularly love a fry up when we're away for a weekend racing. Um, but how does that make you feel after you've had that fry up? Does it make you feel tired? Does it make you feel bloated? Does it make you feel sluggish? And the answer to those is probably yes. So as lovely as it is to have a fry up, maybe think about how that's gonna affect you for the race. It often, where it makes you feel tired, it takes the edge off of how you think, how you process your thoughts, how you process your tactics, because your body is working so hard on processing that fry up in your stomach, it takes the energy away and you can't concentrate quite so well. So just have a think about what you're eating for breakfast. Um, equally, if you're having say Rice Krispies, is that really gonna fuel you for a whole morning's worth of sailing? So maybe think about some porridge. If, you, if you're if you not really keen on porridge, put some bananas, strawberries, raspberries in, big splodge of honey, some chocolate spread, mix it in. If you don't like it, make it into something that tastes a bit better. Um, and that'll help slow release carbs and energy all the way through, through your morning. So just have a think about what you're eating. If you still want that fry up, that's fine. Um, but just be aware, you might realise a little bit next time if you've had a fry up in the morning and you're starting to feel a bit tired and sluggish, then you might realise why that could be. So timings is the next really important thing whilst you're eating. Um, you don't want to be having a really big meal just before you go onto the water. Um, again, that will sit in your stomach your body will be busy processing what's in your stomach and not helping your brain function and think quickly and clearly. You'll be lethargic. So have a have a meal a good couple of hours before you go off and race or before you go off and sail. And then you can maybe have smaller snacks if you're still hungry a little bit closer to when you actually launch. Um, the main thing to remember, and again, this is something we say to our triathletes a lot as well, if you're hungry or thirsty during a race, it's too late. Your body is already slowed down. You've already had that fuel or hydration deficit and you're already suffering the effects of not having enough fuel or being too dehydrated. So you wanna stay ahead of that curve. If you're hungry or thirsty, eat immediately or drink immediately because it's already too late. So the key is to have mouthfuls the odd mouthful or the odd sip as regularly as you can. So if you've get you've got a spare minute, quiet part of the race course, have a sip of drink or have a mouthful. Um, I tend to keep in my BA pocket um, like sweets or little chunks of um, cereal bar so you can just shove a bit in your mouth and off you go. So you're not unwrapping anything. It's there, it's ready, it's really easy to get. Um, if you're wondering about how many calories you need to be eating, I think you'd be surprised. So I would recommend wearing a heart rate monitor for one of your races and just having a look. I mean, heart rate monitors aren't really accurate at their calorie predictions, but it gives you a good idea of just how much extra food you need to be eating whilst you're racing. So have a look at that and then go off and have a look at some packets to compare just how much extra food you need to be, need to be consuming. I think you'd be surprised. Um, Energy gels and bars, these are the most convenient things for you whilst you're racing. Um, I know there's plenty of room, particularly in a GP, to bring your sandwiches and a whole pack lunch, 
but um, just a couple of energy bars. Again, they can fit into the pockets of your BA really easily. They're really handy to pick up and just have really fast. Um, again, if you're feeling hungry, energy gels are the best things to have because they get absorbed really, really fast. And within 20 minutes, you've got the effect of those calories of that sugar and you get a big, really quick boost. Um, bananas are also really good. They also make you feel a little bit more fill up more than the gels do. You've got to be careful with the energy gels. Um, there are lots of different brands, lots of different varieties, and you will need to experiment with them. Some of them will give you really bad tummy ache. Some of them will make you feel sick. Some of them, the consistency might make you gag. So it's really important that you try lots of different ones until you find one that you like and that you're comfortable with, if that's how you want to go. Um, same with energy drinks, it's really handy to just put a couple of scoops of powder into your water, give it a good shake, and then you've got your energy in your drink. So you're gaining that fuel and your hydration at the same time. It's one less thing to, to think about. So as a guide, whilst our athletes are racing, we get them to have between 60 and 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour. Now that's quite a lot. Um, for everybody here, I would say probably aim for 60 to 70. For the moment, it's quite difficult to get your body to absorb a whole 90 grams of carbs. And that takes practice and training. So you'd need to need to practice fueling whilst you're training to be able to get up to that absorption level for your body. So aim between 60 and 90. On the back of your gel packets, so as a guide, gels are normally about 20 grams so that would be one gel every 20 minutes if you're racing hard so it's a lot more fuel than you think you need um but it's really important you'll find that your body works faster you don't get that fatigue quite so much um and equally your brain will still work so i think we've all got to the end of the race where we just feel absolutely mentally frazzled so that's often a sign that you haven't eaten enough, that you've not got enough sugar or carbs, or you're not hydrated well enough. So give it a go when you're out on the water. Eat constantly. Um, see how you feel afterwards. See how your decision making is. Um, equally, with your temperament, it can keep you a lot happier. I know we all get a bit afraid towards the end of the races if we make mistakes. Um, so really important to keep eating and fueling post race how many of us go for a beer and peanuts back at the bar do we think that's a good thing okay you saying no <laughs> um it's not actually that bad um so beer is full of carbs so you're replenishing the carbs that you've lost the thing to watch is that it can make you dehydrated so don't drink too much beer, but a little bit isn't necessarily a bad thing. Peanuts, again, carbohydrates, you're replenishing. There's also lots of salt on peanuts. So if you are dehydrated, replenishing those salts can be a good thing and you can feel a lot better for them. So whilst I say don't go mad on the beers, so being hung over the next day and being really dehydrated the next day isn't ideal if you're racing. Um, having a beer as a quick shot of carbs is isn't actually going to do you too much harm equally too much alcohol prevents your body from um recovering so you're much likely to be more physically tired the next day your muscles haven't had that chance to recover so well because of the alcohol timings for eating after your race Basically, when you come off the water, when you finish your race, you want to get carbs and protein into your body as quickly as possible. So the longer you leave it, the less able your body is to repair quickly. So things, anything proteins, I've got on here, do I need a protein shake? You don't really need to have a protein shake, but if you're, you come off the water, you're going to want to derig your boat, put everything away, get changed before you go back up to the bar to grab some proper food. So actually having a protein shake when you get off the water is a pretty good idea. And you can leave that by your boat, by your kit, so you can grab it as soon as you come off. So just have a bottle of water, have the powder separate and mix it as soon as you get off the water. 
drink it down and that's it you're done you haven't got to think about it or worry about it again so while it might seem excessive and you think oh I'm only doing only doing racing at the back of the fleet I don't need to be worried about all that actually if you want to get up and race tomorrow it's a pretty good idea to have a protein shake so that you're not really tired tomorrow and you'll have a much better day you'll enjoy it more tomorrow and you'll do better than you thought you would because your body's ready to go again Similar to breakfasts and the fry ups, you need to think about your evening meals. If you want to keep recovering, um, if you want to have a good night's sleep as well, there's no good having a really heavy, spicy meal that's going to sit in your stomach that's really greasy and keep you awake all night. Again, not being able to sleep, your body's not going to recover. You're not going to be able to concentrate tomorrow because you're tired. So just have a little bit of a think about what evening meals you can sleep well on. Um, try not to eat them immediately before you go to bed. And just be sensible about your thinking. Have maybe some people keep a food diary of what they eat in the week running up to a race day on how that makes them feel. Um, and that's really useful because then when you come to a big race, you can remember what to eat and what not to eat and what makes you feel rubbish. So that can really help. And then again, fueling and repairing for tomorrow. So in those evening meals, protein is really good. If you've had a really hard day and you're really tired, your muscles ache, you want to be eating protein to help your body repair those muscles. So fish, meat, um, you want to replenish all of those carbs that you've lost. So you want a big dinner. It's an excuse to have a big dinner. And by all means have a dessert because you're trying to get all of those carbs back into your body to allow your body to be ready for tomorrow. So yeah, so Catherine, what, what food is good post racing rather than supplements? So anything protein you can, anything that's got protein in is really, really good. Nuts are good for adding the carbs back, especially if they've got a bit of salt in to help you replenish your salts if you've been dehydrated, particularly if it's a really hot and sunny day. Um, bananas are good. You're basically focusing on protein and carbs. That's your key areas to look at. So the next bit we go on, I've mentioned a little bit of being dehydrated. Are you taking enough drink out onto the water with you? So many times I see people just take out a really tiny little bottle of water for a whole day's racing. That's not going to do any good at all. Dehydration, it can actually be really, really dangerous to be dehydrated, particularly when it's hot and sunny. Um, as a general day-to-day -day dehydration, if you're feeling thirsty, you're dehydrated, it's too late. You never actually really want to be feeling thirsty because that means that you are dehydrated. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, I've just got a, a flash of Charlie's other half. I think. <laughs> um, so dehydration, if you're dehydrated, it's going to reduce your reaction time. Um, you're not gonna be able to make those decisions as quick as you want to you're going to be slower, it's going to be harder to make those decisions as well. So if you're not sure whether to go left or right, and you're dehydrated, dehydrated, that decision is going to be made 100 times harder, and you're just making life difficult for yourself. If you're hydrated, your brain's functioning properly, your muscles are working properly, and everything will just seem so much more easy. So like I said, there, it clouds your thinking, it clouds your decision making, it increases the stress on your body and it reduces recovery time. So if you're dehydrated, your, your muscles are not gonna get all of the nutrients that they need to recover with. So your blood will get a little bit stickier. So the more hydration you've got, your blood flows more freely, your blood flows into your muscles a bit better, a bit faster, and you can recover a lot faster. And I've put at the bottom there, mood, tempers. If you're dehydrated, your temper is going to be lost a lot faster than if you're hydrated. So if you find yourself being a really, really lovely crew or helm all the way through the race, um, maybe later on in the afternoon, you start to get a bit irritable, a bit ratty, small things are making you snap at your crew or helm. 
And it could be because you're dehydrated. So it will make a big difference. And that ties in also with your eating. So if you've not got enough sugar, if you've not eaten enough, again, you can be really ratty and irritable and not very nice to be around. So just if that starts to happen to you, I think it's at the Snickers bar, the Snickers bar advert where he's, he's having a strop and he gives him a Snickers and it calms him down. It's very much like that. And you can do that if you notice that your Helm or crew is starting to get a bit irritable and you've not really seen them eat or drink anything, just pass them something to eat and say, here, why don't you have some of this? And you can be really tactful for it and it might make the rest of your sailing experience for the day a little bit more pleasant. So there's a little tip for you if you're in with somebody that's irritable at the end of the day. Um, and at the bottom, I put down here, consider hydro tabs. So hydration tablets are really, really good. I use them all the time. Um, you just put one into your bottle of water, it fizzes and it releases all of the electrolytes that you need, the salts, and it's a really good way of staying hydrated without having to drink gallons and gallons of water. I probably shouldn't say this, but if you have had too many beers the night before, hydration tabs are really good for clearing your hangover and for making you sharp again the next day. So, <laughs> so even if you're not too worried about the sailing, it's really good for your hangovers. So I would recommend getting some hydration tabs. So... This is just a quick screenshot of, we are at the end now, this is just a quick screenshot of our sailing fitness class that we were doing through lockdown. And this is one of the best core exercises you can do on your side planks. And it's a really good example of how you can work out at home, do your exercises at home and not really need any space. And it's amazing how difficult this particular move can be, especially if you've got your arm up and your leg up. And you're working your core really really hard so just think about not necessarily getting a gym membership and rushing back to the gym i would always say build up your strength with your body weight first and then if you really need to go and use weights but body weight is key for building the strength up so as a final final summary page Everybody is absolutely welcome to come along, give classes a try with me. You will get a one month free pass to classes using the code dinghy21 at checkout. So I should have put the website on there, but it's quite easy to remember www.streamfitness.co.uk. Um, we will post some links up later, but do come along and give it a go. So hopefully I've asked answered or preempted some questions or answered some as we've gone along but if anybody's got any please feel free to fire them into the chat box or to message me afterwards so there is a question on there jumping to see every day in the past few months particular exercises to build your core for sailing so the best ones for building your core, um, I would say to come to Pilates because that will be the best way to build your core strength. Um, the really good ones are Russian twists. So you're sat in a V position with your knees up or you can put your toes up into the air and your arms come up over the top and down to your hips on the other side. And that will do all of your core muscles as you're twisting around as well. So weak wrists. Um, Charlie, I would say to come to swim bands because you're using the bungees. And as you pull down the bungee, you're trying to keep your wrist in a really straight position rather than bending and twisting. And you're using your forearm strength and your upper arm strength and all together, that will really help with that. Um, yes, Catherine, I think this is being recorded, so it will be available. Yeah, Charlie's nodding. Yeah, so it will be recorded. So if you do want to use it, that's fine. Um, Curly, if you want to email me or get in touch, then I can help you with that. Um, so all of our classes at Stream Fitness are tailored for every single ability. We've got people there who have never exercised before, all the way along to people who are participating for GB and triathlon. Um, and then ranging from people 
that don't enjoy exercise that have found a different way to do it. So that the key bit is to enjoy what you're doing. You might go out to do a run and have an absolutely miserable time. That's okay. That doesn't mean that fitness and exercise isn't for you. That just means running isn't for you. So come and try something different. There will be something that you enjoy that suits you. Um, all of our classes as well are tailored specifically for the people that turn up. So we get to know our members really well and we know and we can watch you to see what exercises you can cope with and deal with and what exercises you might be struggling with, which movements you look uncomfortable doing. And the instructors will tailor the exercises to suit you, your ability and your movements. So we've got people, again, all abilities and then all age ranges. I think our oldest member is 76 at the moment. And she does the classes in with everybody else and they're all tailored, everybody's mixed in and, it, and it's really good and it's really motivating because you can see absolutely everybody in together. And there's nobody that finds it too easy and there's nobody that finds it too hard because everything is tailored in step levels per exercise for you. Okay, let me just see if there's any more questions on here. So Chris, out of sailing for some years, but I've been doing triathlons, how should my training change and what should I focus on? So Chris, is that for, you want to focus on sailing or focus on triathlon? Are you still there? On focus on sailing. Okay, so it'll be a little bit less um, of the endurance-based training, but you still want to do some endurance-based training. Um, you want to be doing a little bit more dynamic movement, so dynamic strength, so maybe some jump squats, jump lunges, some diagonal hops is something that we focused a lot on our strength training um, classes at Stream Fitness. So you're on one leg, you'll do a big hop onto the other leg diagonally, and then hop backwards, making sure you keep your balance on each leg as you go. And then other ones that are good are you lie flat, you leave your legs on the floor, you arms above your head, you lift your arms all the way up, touch your toes on the floor, come all the way back to a lying position again, and then bring your toes all the way up over to touch your fingertips and back. So your fingers to toes, toes to fingers, and that will really help you with hiking, with getting in and out of that hike as well. So that's a really good one to do. Um, yeah, so Catherine comes to Pilates classes on a Monday night. They're Monday nights at six o'clock. Um, and it really is very, very good for sailing, but well, for any sport, because it focuses so hard on your core. If you're a bit intimidated by the Pilates, by how difficult I've been telling you it is, there are beginner classes on a Wednesday lunchtime that helps to ease you into it. Um, they're much more gentle than the Monday night classes. So there is something for everybody on those ones, but Pilates is a really, really good thing to do. So Chris, I'd recommend for you as well to come along to, or to find Pilates classes to come and do, um, that will really help with your sailing. And swim bands, because it strengthens all of your arms, back, shoulders. So yeah. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, you are more than welcome to send a message. We've got a Facebook page, Stream Fitness UK. Um, so you're more than welcome to post a question on there or email through there if you want to. But I appreciate I've whizzed through everything. So you're more than welcome to ping me across some messages and ask in more detail if you want to. But do come along, join some classes, have a look and be fit and ready for sailing in the summer, because I'm sure we're all desperate to get back onto the water again. Yeah, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Gemma. Very good <laughs> Thank, thank you, you, Gemma. Thanks, Gemma. Thanks, thank you, Gemma. Bye. 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 Have a lovely day. And you, bye, darling. <laughs>